I'm going to be covering the part of confidentiality and also the values and ethics. Again, these are things that are given to you uh, with part of your intake packet, but we're also required to train on them as well. So uh, we're going to talk confidentiality first. First and foremost, there is no reason for you to ever discuss another cl a client here at New Day, period. Really, there's no reason, um, unless you're in a position where it's part of your job. So, uh, for example, um, you know, someone, you're, you're at a dinner with some family and they say, oh, tell us about how Bob's doing. <laughs> not, not really the place to talk about Bob, right? Uh, folks that work in New Day are protected through HIPAA. HIPAA is a compliance law that allows people to receive health services, which we are considered, and to be protected to receive those by not having their confidentiality exploited. Now, I will tell you, it, it may seem kind of weird because some of the clients that you work with, they love to tell everyone that they work in New Day, and that's fine. And, and, and for some people, it's okay. We have releases of information. They can, they, we can talk about them working at New Day, but overall, to protect yourself and to protect other people, it is vitally important that you just do not talk about other clients. Uh, talk about clients in the community, talk about clients with your family. Uh, it is okay to talk about clients with your coworkers, with your supervisor. That's, we're all on the same team, that's what we do. So some, uh, some examples of when it's okay to break confidentiality. I wanna cover these real quick. First and foremost, where there is a clear and present danger to harm yourself or another person. Our actions may include recommendations of hospitalization as well as notifying law enforcement and or of family and friends of individuals at whom harm is intended. So again, the person is uh, a harm to themselves or a harm to another human being. Again, hopefully you have your supervisor in the loop uh, before you make those, those calls. So it's not just you making those calls alone, but in case of an emergency, if they're a harm to themselves or a harm to another person. Uh, in the case of child abuse, elder abuse, vulnerable adult abuse, which we deal with that a lot, right? The client comes and says, hey, you know, so-and-so has been doing this to me. Again, we... And the other example would be uh, if there was abuse reported, uh, elder abuse, child abuse, or vulnerable adult abuse, which we deal with. Um, again, you want to notify your immediate supervisor immediately and then make sure that you, uh, you can disclose the confidentiality in that case as well. Uh, when you're ordered by a court order, so some of you know this about me, some of you don't know this about me, but I work at a drug and alcohol treatment as well. I'm a, a licensed counselor and uh, I'll never forget this. I, I had two uh, law enforcement officers come to the door during my group and they knocked on the, the door and they said, is Bob in, in your group? And I said, I can't tell you if Bob's in my group. And they said, we're gonna arrest you if you don't tell us if Bob's in your group. Again, I can't tell you if Bob's in my group unless I have a piece of paper signed by a judge that says, you need to tell these guys that Bob's in your group. And I explained that to them. They were very upset with me. And about an hour later, they came back and said, we're very sorry, but here is a piece of paper that we need to know if Bob's in your group. And I said, oh yeah, that piece of paper will let, yeah, Bob's in my group, you can come get him. So. It has to be court ordered. It has to be signed by a judge. Again, do not be making these decisions without having some form of supervisor in your midst. The minute that happened to me, I immediately called my clinical supervisor and said, hey, this is what's going on. And she was actually drove down and joined me when they did come back with the signed court order. Um, and, and the last one we kind of talked about, but when you're discussing it with the other professionals here at New Day, you know, you're obviously, again, we are all under the same umbrella. We all have that agreement signed, we work together. Uh, that would be another time that you would discuss a client or break a client's confidentiality. Of course, I don't, wouldn't even say it's breaking confidentiality because we're discussing the, the client. And the last one would be when there's sexual harassment or discrimination um, during any kind of services. You can tell the, your supervisor that you believe this stuff's been going on. And, and again, that would be a reason to break confidentiality working within the team. Any questions about confidentiality? What do you do if you have a laptop that has client information on it and you're going to take that laptop home with you? Any ideas? Keep it in the trunk of your car and better have a password protection on it. Yeah, trunk of your car that is not a windowed trunk, right? Uh, the reason why you keep it in the trunk of your car is that someone can't just break the window and grab your laptop. This has actually happened. Uh, there was confidential information on the laptop. They stopped and got gas. They ran in to get a soda. Someone ran over, smashed the window, grabbed the laptop to obviously steal it and hawk it. 
Not only did they lose the laptop, but now they have a HIPAA violation because there was confidential information on it. So again, if you're taking files or a laptop or something with you off-site, which really you shouldn't be unless you have permission from your supervisor, but if you are a supervisor or someone that's doing that, then you need to make sure that you have that locked up into a trunk that is not accessible through a window. Um, here's the next question. How do you send text messages to your coworkers about the clients? Do you, how do you, how, what do you do there? Any ideas? Preferably first initial, first two initials and then of the first name, first two initials of the last name. Yes. Uh, I think it's easier to understand. Personally, I'm, I'm one that likes to have name, last initials, last two ni part initials. Never send a full name over text. Why? Texts aren't secure. Same with an email. Uh, emails are not secure unless you're using an actually certified secured email, which odds are you're probably not. Um, it's best to use first name, last initials are the first name's initials, last name. Again, I prefer to use first name, last initials. Again, the bottom line is really there's no reason for you to be breaking confidentiality and or discussing the client outside of New Day unless it's one of these uh, examples that we used. Now on to values and ethics. Again, this is something you receive uh, at intake. I'm going to cover some of the more important ones. I'm going to, you're going to be getting this packet when you get this training. I'm going to ask that you do take a minute, even if you press pause right now, and read over the values and ethics. Why? Because failure to do these well, could and probably will result in your termination of employment here. So these are very important. These are the things that we build our company upon. These are the things that protect us and protect the people that we serve and work with. So these are very important. This is a very, very important document. And like I said, I'm going to highlight some of the more important ones. But uh, more importantly, it's up to you to read through the rest. I, the first page, I'm just going to sum up with this. Treat others the way that you would want to be treated, or you'd want a family member to be treated, or you'd want a friend to be treated. That's really what that all this, this whole front page comes down to. If you were receiving services at New Day, how would you want to be treated? Would you want to be yelled at? Would you want to be belittled? Would you want to be talked down to? How would you want to be treated? If your brother was here or your sister was here, would you want them to feel like they weren't wanted or they weren't cared for or that they weren't valued? Would you want that? No, you wouldn't want that. How would you want your family member, your parents, right, if they were receiving services? So it's really simple, and it comes down to really simply looking at these and saying, I value the person that I work with. I value my coworkers. I would want to be treated this way, so therefore I will treat others this way. It's really that simple. Be kind to one another. So that's pretty much the first page. Again, I'm going to ask you to read that, but I am going to talk about two things in the first page. The second paragraph, I believe that persons receiving my services are unique individuals with varying interest and aptitudes. They should not be grouped together on the basis of a label, functioning level, or confident convenience of support. Everybody here is an individual. It's very often and very common with people with disabilities for them to get lumped into one category and not receive individual services. So be very careful with that. Realize that everybody has a unique service. Everybody has a unique individual personality that you want to be aware of. You want to try and help them. Um, they may all work in the same shop, and that's great, but maybe Bob's better at sanding and, and Joe's better at screwing in a screw. Recognize those, those, those weaknesses and those strengths and, and try to adapt your services. Try to adapt your, your workability to those. Work with those. Uh, again, I'm going to work on helping Joe be a better sander and work on Bob being a better screwdriver. Does that make sense? Uh, further down on the page, I will build, or excuse me, onto the second page of your values and ethics. Uh, I will not use derogative language in my writing or verbal communication to or about clients or consumers. Uh, guys, I know I get it. It's easy to swear once in a while it happens, but if you're doing it on a regular basis around the clients and, and your coworkers, unacceptable. Unacceptable. Uh, there's no need for it. Um, if you really struggle with finding an alternative word, maybe talk to your supervisor. Maybe figure out a, uh, another word you can use, but really you've got to be careful. Uh, you know, a good example is um, these guys, they're sponges. 
that we work with, right? These these folks that we work with, they're sponges. They they go home and say, hey, you know, I heard Terry say this today. Well, whoops, uh, maybe I didn't want that to be repeated, right? right. Um, the second reason is, is it's a respect thing. Not everybody finds those words on a different level. Uh, they, they can be found offensive. Um, so again, uh, avoid bad language when working with the clients and, and working with your coworkers. Um, three, I will not financially exploit a client or a consumer, employers, by borrowing or stealing money. I have a really good story about this one. Uh, the client and the staff, they, were, they stopped in at Maverick, pretty much stopped in at Maverick every morning before they headed to the rest area. That's what they did. And the one morning, um, the, the employee had, it was like literally like a dollar short, and they were going to go put back the, the chocolate milk they were going to buy, and the client says, oh, hey, I'll, I'll, I'll let you borrow a dollar, right? I'll, I'll, I got you, you know. And the employee said, oh, you sure? Yeah, 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 well, I'll pay you back. Okay, great. So borrowed a dollar, bought the chocolate milk, walked out the door, went and worked at the rest area all day, worked hard at the rest area, got home, totally forgot, oh, yeah, I owe him a dollar. Two days later, I get a phone call from an agency that the client works with, and they said, your employee stole a dollar from, didn't say a dollar, just said your employee stole the other morning. And I said, wait, what? And they, you know, this is a really good employee. And they said, yeah, the, the, according to what the client's telling us, um, they took money from the client, right? And so had to call in the employee. I said, hey, did you take much? Well, no, wait a minute. I did. I, I, and I did. I forgot to pay him back. Yeah, I borrowed a dollar. Yeah, yeah, no, not okay, right? I mean, this, this client, in their mind, a dollar's a big deal, right? In this, this, their mind, they felt like when they didn't get paid back the minute they got back to New Day or the next day or whatever it was, that they were stolen from. And they told their house that they lived in that they had been stolen, that, that this employee had stole from them, right? So again, be on the safe side, just don't lend any money. Just don't go down that road. Don't borrow, of course, don't steal. Um, and, and these folks want to help out. These, these guys that we work with, they want to give you money sometimes, right? They want to be nice. They want to give you a gift, right? Yeah, and, and we have to be so careful to say, no, no, you can't spend your money on me. You know, this is not acceptable. Uh, set those boundaries. Again, uh, if you receive a gift, uh, make sure your supervisor is fully aware. Hey, you know, uh, Bob brought me this leftover salmon that he got from his fishing trip, right? I mean, cool, right? But make sure that that isn't viewed as you exploiting them to get you uh, some leftover salmon from their fishing trip. Um, always make sure that your supervisor is involved. I will not engage in any physical contact with the client or consumer when there is a possibility of psychological harm to the client or consumer as a result of the contact. For example, cradling or caressing. Um, I take that one step further and I include hugging. Uh, be very careful. Uh, I, again, I just recommend don't touch. Uh, I think that's to be on the safe side. Um, we had a, a, an employee here who had been a mother to seven kids and she was all about the hugs, right? She was all about the hugs. Well, unfortunately for our clients, they have a hard time distinguishing between what's a motherly hug and what's a hug, I like you hug, and what's, a, what's an okay hug and what's not an okay hug. And, and again, they were getting mixed signals that the hugs that they were getting from this elderly woman uh, were a, of another nature, a hug that I like you kind of hug. And they were confused and, and they thought that there was a relationship there. You know, see how that all just started because of a kind hug? Don't touch. Uh, my advice is if you can avoid it at all costs, don't touch. Um, if you find yourself in a situation where there has been a hug or something has happened, for example, one time, I, and, and this is a true story, and I hope you laugh when I tell you the story, um, my shirt had become untucked, right? I, I often wear collared shirts, and I had a shirt that had become untucked in the back, and I was standing in the lunchroom at a Christmas party, at a holiday party, and the client came up and shoved their hand all the way down my pants to tuck my shirt back in for me, right? Whoa, right? I'm like, hey, time out. What was that? You know, hold on. Um, yeah, that, you know, took my breath away. Uh, I immediately made sure that Kathy knew what had happened, and I told the client, we don't help tuck other people's shirts. She was just trying to be helpful. She just thought my shirt was untucked. And in her life, when her shirt's untucked, she has a staff that helps her get dressed, right? So she just thought for sure I just needed a little bit of an extra hand to make sure that my shirt was tucked. 
see how that became an issue pretty quickly, right? Make sure that if there's any kind of touching, people are notified and, and, and you know, it's just not you being like, oh, yeah, I had someone do that the other day. No, make sure you follow, cover your bases, let your supervisor know. Um, but generally speaking, don't touch. Any questions so far? Uh, fifth one, um, I will not advise on problems outside of my bounds of confidence. Uh, this happens frequently. In fact, I want to give you another example. We had a, a job coach. The client said, uh, I'm having a hard time sleeping, right? And so the job coach says, well, I'm going to prescribe you take some melatonin then because that melatonin helps me sleep. Well, all of a sudden, I get a phone call from a doctor saying you have a job coach that's trying to take my job and recommended that this person take melatonin, which, by the way, if they take melatonin with their sleeping pill that I just prescribed them, it could potentially kill them. Outside of your scope of confidence, you've got to be very careful to not give advice outside the scope of confidence, of your competence. Um, I believe you're all pretty competent and pretty capable, but you've got to be very careful. Uh, I had someone who wanted to get a job at a certain uh, factory here in town. And their job coach says, well, you should be able to get that job. Why shouldn't you be able to get that? I think you should get that job. You, you, yeah, let's, and, and, and so without telling the supervisor, without telling anybody else, they went and tried to get this individual a job at this factory. Well, guess what? At this factory, it was a very dangerous job for some of the, situa for some of the disabilities that this individual had right? Uh, they oftentimes had a seizure and they could fall into the belt and it could possibly kill them. Um, but without consulting anybody else that had that knowledge, this job coach on their own went and had this person apply and tried to get them a job. And when we had to intervene, well, of course, we're the bad guys now, right? Because we're not going to let him work at this, this factory job that they so wanted. Outside of your scope, you have a team that one could have prevented you from doing something that one, really hurt our relationship with that individual. In fact, that individual actually quit working with us because we were holding them back uh, when we knew that that could have been a very dangerous situation. So working within the scopes of your job, if you ever have doubts, contact your supervisor. One simple question to a supervisor. Hey, Bob really wants to work at this factory. What do you think about that? Supervisor has that knowledge. That's not a good fit. Let me tell you why, right? Make sure that you consult. Don't become your own expert. Another, another example of that is chemicals. I want to add this. You work with a lot of chemicals. A lot of you are working with chemicals. Again, you might have a good idea what chemical does what, but we have people here that that's their job, is to know what chemicals can and cannot be mixed. When in doubt, consult with another supervisor. Consult with a coworker. Um, don't try to take this on by yourself. We can have some serious damage done because you decided that you were the expert when it comes to mixing cleaning solutions. I will build confidence through teamwork and open, candid conversations at all levels of the organization. Uh, that kind of goes back to what we were just talking about. I call it stupid communication, right? You may feel stupid having this conversation because you don't think it's that important, but guess what? Sometimes those stupid conversations are the things that save a big problem from happening, right? Uh, sometimes I feel like I'm Pete and repeat when it comes to passing information along. But that information might be what needs to happen to prevent someone from getting in trouble. So uh, I will build a confidence through teamwork and open, candid communication. Now, candid, let's talk about candid communication for a minute. Candid communication means sometimes having to give critical feedback, right? Uh, some constructive feedback, right? Sometimes that's awkward or maybe uncomfortable. If you have a hard time going down that road, that's why you have supervisors. If it's with your supervisor, perhaps getting someone else, getting myself. I mean, can I, can I meet with Terry and with Hannah so we can talk about the situation, right? We have an open door policy at New Day, and the reason we have that is because we have to have that level of communication. So it's very important that you have those candid, open conversations with your coworkers and with your supervisors. And by the way, that was on the first page. I'm jumping back to the second page now. And I told you I'm just kind of covering some of the ones that I feel that are most important. They're all very important, but the ones that are a little bit more important. Um, I will be a support. I will be supportive of coworkers and maintain positive and professional interactions. Guys, I'll tell you right now, ladies and gentlemen, there's nothing. There's no way quicker to get fired in this company than be a negative nally. Uh, it's unacceptable. 
we have too much drama already when working in this field than to have your drama uh, and your negativity. Um, it's not acceptable. It's not allowed here at this workplace. Uh, I have a sign that says, spare me the drama, right? If it's drama, it's not appropriate. We need to communicate. We need to be open. We need to be honest. We need to be supportive and we need to be positive. Uh, we all have bad days. They happen. The important thing is, is that we don't have all bad days. If you're to the point where you're having all bad days, it's time to reevaluate what you're doing. Maybe it's time to have a heart to heart communication with your uh, coworkers, with your supervisor. Maybe it's time to reevaluate, maybe changing things up if it's always that bad all the time. But something that's not allowed here. We got too much, too much to do to be negative. Uh, I will obtain education through trainings and seeking understanding the nature of social diversity and oppression with respect to race, ethnicity, national origin, color, sexual orientation, age, marital status, political beliefs, and mental or physical disabilities. Basically, I will pay attention during the trainings. If you're watching this, pat yourself on the back. You're taking one step in the right direction. In fact, we're going to be starting to quiz and test people to make sure they're watching this. Uh, it's very important that you do the trainings. The trainings are there to be guideposts for you, to be handrails to help you through some of the more difficult situations that this employment provides working with other human beings. Uh, so it's important that you engage in trainings. It's important that you educate yourself. It's important that you read flyers that are sent out. It's important that you read memos that are sent out. But most importantly, it's, it's important for you to be in a training and being trained. If there's an area that you feel like you don't understand or you need some more understanding, ask someone. Talk to your supervisor, talk to a coworker. We have plenty of resources. We have plenty of people that have been in this field for a very long time and they're here to help you. Do not hesitate to ask for help to receive the training that you need to be able to do a good job. If I know a coworker has violated ethical standards, I will bring this to my coworker's attention and report the activity to my supervisor. Silence is deadly. It can really, it can cause harm. Uh, you have got to let your supervisors know if something's said. If you have a, a coworker, just like Brian talked about in the drug and alcohol policies, that says, hey, I've been doing drugs, right, and you don't say anything, and then they have an accident in the vehicle because they were high and or drunk, that's back on you, right? Play it safe. First of all, tell your coworker, hey, we don't joke around about that stuff. Second of all, if you feel that that person is violating drug and alcohol policy, you can tell someone. I had someone that uh, had an, an accident with a, a ladder and come to find out five people walked past that person that was not using the ladder properly. And out of those five people, four of them had been trained on ladder safety or supposedly trained on ladder safety and they didn't say anything. That can't happen. You've got to be willing to step up and say, hey, I think you can do something different, better, especially if it's unethical or especially if it's violating or causing harm to themselves or to someone else. It's very important that you do that for your safety, their safety, and the client's safety. You've got to make sure that you are willing and you do tell someone about any violations of ethical standards. And the last thing I'd like to talk about is I understand that violations of New, Day pro New Day's products, codes of ethics may be grounds of termination. Guys, I will tell you, ladies and gentlemen, I'll tell you right now, I've yet to lose a case with the Department of Labor if someone has violated a code of ethics and I pull out the values and ethics paper and said, nope, that person didn't report something when they should have. The Department of Labor says, yep, that was a warranted firing. Everything that's on these three pages, everything that's on this document, can and will have you terminated if you violate them, right? If you're not respectful to others, if you're not kind to others, if you don't talk when you should talk, if you don't uh, go to trainings, if you don't just basically do common sense, you can and will be terminated. Um, so it's very important that you adhere to these policies. They're there to help you. They're there to guide you. They're there to protect you. Um, it's very important that you pay attention to these. And again, I'm going to strongly suggest that when you get done with this video, you take this packet, read over it. If you have questions, ask your supervisor. Uh, I have an open door. If you have questions, ask me. It's very important that you understand the values and the ethics that we have here at this company. So, to cap it all off, 
Your job's not easy. I know it and you know it. You work with other human beings. It's a lot harder than working with a gadget, right? The gadget stays the same every day. You show up to work, you put the gadget on, you move on, move on, right? Human beings, they change hourly, minutely. You're constantly dealing with change in this job. It's very important that you have tools that can help you be the best employee that you can be. It's very important that you have skills that can help you be the best employee that you can be. And it's very important that you follow these values and ethics to be the best person that you can be. That's why they're here, to protect you, to guide you, and to help you be the best that you can be. We're grateful that you work here. We're grateful that you're a part of our team. Do everything you can to continue to be a valued part of our team by following our values and our ethics and keeping confidentiality. Thank you for working here. You're doing a phenomenal job. We appreciate you. Keep up the good work. Mm -hmm.